Hello and welcome to lesson three in this lower intermediate series of 10 lessons. And this is the last lesson that's um, going to be free on YouTube and lessons four to 10 in this level and all the other levels, or the other uh, four levels, uh, can be found on the Patreon channel. And if you subscribe to Patreon, you can um, sign up for a month uh, or, or any amount of time. So you get uh, access to, I think, 105 videos eventually when they're all finished. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at half position today. And this is where the whole hand, including the thumb, moves back a fret. So if you think, move back, add a finger. And by this, I mean, um, so normally we'd have a G with the first position. If we're in half position, now that becomes a three. And similarly for D, so we have a D in first position. Now we've got D with a two. And one that's worth really remembering is this B natural with a two. And then a C with a three. Whereas we have had one and a two very tempting to look at a B and put a 1 down. Of course now you get a B flat. So let's look at the notes that we have on the first fret across the whole of this, all of the six strings. So on the E string we have F and I think I mentioned this F in the last session. This is the F that's on the C string. It's the same as the first fret on the E string. And this F is a much more beautiful F than this one. And there's a reason for that. This is our thickest gut string. And it's quite a long way down the fingerboard. So it's quite hard to make it speak quite quickly. So in preference, I would always use this F on the um, E string. Sometimes it's not always possible. That's why I want you to learn where that one is. So that's F. Now on C string, we've got C sharp. And on the G string, we've got G sharp. B flat. And then on the top D we've got D sharp or E flat. Now on the bottom D we've got exactly the same. So we've got an E flat here and an E flat here. And that's really worth remembering that the top two Ds are the same and I know that's completely obvious to say um, but uh, it's just worth remembering so we'll come back to that. If we look at Vile Player Book 3 now, um, this is on page 3, let's look at the C major scale in half position. So we did this in the last lesson in first position, now we're going to do it in half position. So I think we can do this with a bow straight away. And um, when we get to D, you've probably seen in the book, when you get to D, hold it down until you play the F. And then you've got that lovely resonance. D and the F sounding together. Okay, here we go. So, three, four. And it feels really strange, doesn't it, doing a B with a two? But that's the semitone there, B with a two. Should we try that again? Here we go. So, Three, four. And there are lots of different types of bowings and combinations of rhythms in the end of this book where you've got I've written out a few of the scales. So if you want to go ahead and, and look at those. Um, that can test when you change the rhythm and change the bowing, it tests the left hand to see how well you know it. Right, let's look at C major arpeggio now. So C, E, G with a three. Now we're going to add a finger for four. And in our last lesson, we talked about having a really good hand shape here, didn't we? Because then chordal fingering isn't too much of an issue. to go. So let's try this together and let's try it three times. Here we go. One. Oh, and let's hold the fourth finger 
on all the time, rather like we did with the third finger in the last lesson. Okay, so, bow on the string, sink down into the string and just relax, here we go, and one, two, three. <laughs> first bar we've got that nice opportunity to hold the second finger down when we play the play the F so let's play this together and starting with the back bow so start sort of in the middle so you've got a nice um, nice amount of bow for that minim and remember on a back bow it's the back of the hand that leads first it's not the elbow it's always the back of the hand and when we're learning something new with this hand it's really important that we try and maintain whatever we've learnt with the right hand and still have a little bit of brain space to think right okay back of the hand moves on a back bow that's the thing that moves first okay so here we go let's just play the notes with the bow and without dynamics three four <laughs> you feel like you're almost playing a different instrument uh, so that's why we're taking it slowly taking it carefully and um, just letting giving time to think and time to, uh, for things to sink in okay let's look at this again now and um, what I'd like to do is look a bit um, towards the right hand now so I'm going to show you how I want you to play the second bar um, and how I don't want you to play it so I'll just do the first couple of bars. Or the first four bars. Now that was the way I want you to play it. And um, I want you to take a little bit of bow for the A in the second bar. I don't want you to do this. plenty of time to work back to the tip in bar three. So we get a nice, we get that F natural, minim, uh, dotted minim, and then we have a short bow here for the A. It's only a crotchet, it doesn't really matter that it's down here, but it's only a crotchet. And then we can work back down the bow by the time we get to bar four. Let's try that together. Two, three, Four. Ooh, I'll start the back bow this time. Here we go. Three, four. Let's try it again and I'll play the second part. Three, four. So we're going to have a faster bow, but we're still not going to use a huge amount of bow for the crotches. I'll show you what I mean. Here we go. Three, four. So that's um, a situation where we're getting down the bow a little bit further back and a little bit further down and then we find ourselves quite a long way down then we have to work back again 
to bar eight. Let's try that together. Here we go. Three, four. And you try it, I'll play the accompaniment. This is bar five, three, four. Question here. Why do we start with the back bow at the beginning and why do we start with a push bow in bar five? Well what we're aiming for at the beginning is to have a strong bow on the second beat. And I meant to say the second bar. So we start with the back bow. When we at bar five we're starting with a strong beat here. So remember the push bow is strong. So now in bar eight we've got one bow, one back bow and one crotchet and I've ended up here. So I could start it here and I might get into trouble. Can you see I'm getting quite close to the hand here. So what I want you to do in bar eight is to play the F, lift the bow off, put it back at the tip and do another back bow. Let's just do that again, let's do it together. So this is bar eight, um, three, four. One, two, three, lift the bow off. And when you put the bow on at the tip, it feels like it wants to go that way, doesn't it, as a push, but I want you to do a back bow with a crotchet's worth of bow. Let's try bar eight again and go on this time. Same thing happens in bar 12. Here we go, so this is bar eight, and three, four. I didn't have to move the bow quite so much to get back because there's a diminuendo in 12, isn't there? So I had a slightly slower bow. Because I didn't move so far down, I didn't have to go so far back to make sure I had a crotchet at the tip. Let's turn over the page. I'd like to look at F major scale now um, because this is very similar to C major. And We've got an E natural with a two in the way that we had a B natural with a two in C major. We've got an E natural with a two on the D string. So if we start this on the F, so first, um, first fret. Now I'm not expecting you to do this and get it right in half position. So you can do this if you like, first position and think, ah, oh, back to half. But it wouldn't hurt to do this now and again and arrive, and arrive in half. Try, if you can, not to do this. Okay, so F major then. So we've got B flat on the A string. That's the B flat there. Okay, here we go. So three, four. where I want you to hold fingers down. So we've got the B flat and the D. But I'm hoping that when you play G and B flat, because we're used to holding second finger down in first position when you play G, I'm hoping that this G is going to be staying when you play the A. And Mrs. Nagby also says here that the golden rule of scales is to, um, when you're st uh, changing string, the bow moves first while the fingers stay put. And that's a good bit of advice. Thank you, Mrs. Nagby. 
and she says, have I said this before? Well, maybe. Anyway, uh, let's let's do this F major again. Um, here we go. So three, four. <laughs> Closer, um, further down the bow with my arm closer to my body, it feels completely different. It's probably more comfortable, but this is how it should be right out here. So, do you remember what I was saying about um, the F string, the, sorry, the D string, and the F here is the same? on the bottom D string. So if we got this F here and we transferred it down, should we play F major from the bottom now? I know this isn't in the book, but let's just do it. So we've got F, G, without moving the left hand at all. Look how my left hand's up. A with a two, which is a bit weird because it was a one. B flat, three, C, D with a two, which we're sort of getting used to, E, and F. And I'm hoping that you've still got your two down here. Let's try that again. So, this F down here, here we go. Three, four. fingers down every time you, you string cross. So only the bow moves. Three, four. And can you see the difference between playing down here on the bottom string at the tip and playing up here on the top string. It's an enormous physical movement, isn't it? Right down there, it's up there. So when you feel confident, you can put those octaves together and play F major in two octaves, which we might as well do now. Here we go. So two octaves, here we go. Three, four. Arpeggio, and this is pretty similar um, to the C major arpeggio, arpeggio, except we're starting on a, a first finger. So F, A, C with a three, and because we're not going to jump and do another three, because that's banned now, we're going to do a four. And because you've got fingers up in a good hand shape, this is coming quite naturally, hopefully. Call of fingering, it's two fingers down, and it's not your arms stuck out here. Let's just do that three times pizzicato, and I think you'll find that your top finger, your fourth finger, will stay down. Here we go one, two, three. and you're doing chordal fingering, try to keep your left hand as relaxed as possible. It's, try not to clamp your hand onto the vial and, and grip with your thumb as well. 
So just just to reiterate, thumb, the position of the thumb, if possible, and it would be great if it was possible, is to keep this thumb bent outwards. And and probably with a point of contact right on the on the side here, so that it enables it to um, to be bent. And that's going to keep the hand much more supple and stop you from um, gripping too much. Well, you know, when you're doing something new, um, it's quite hard to be relaxed when you're doing it, when it's new, isn't it? So you could close your eyes and just how, how relaxed is your hand? And you learn the, the feeling sense. Let's move on. Over the page, I want to do Hellas Madame because this is um, this gives us another opportunity to hold G and B flat down together uh, in the way that we can hold D and F down. So we're really thinking about fingering not only for one note but for the for the next adjacent note and the non-adjacent note as well so that we can always finger things to get the most resonance from the viol. So let's do this with the bow and um, we're starting with the back bow because we want to get to um, the second bar with a push bow. Okay, so put the bow on on the A string, ready for the B flat. Okay, here we go. So we won't do it too quickly to begin with, we're sight reading it. So one, two. <laughs> So playing F sharp and G with second and third feels weird, doesn't it? it feels completely weird. It's so much easier to play it with a anyway, because that's what we're slightly used to. But now we're doing this with a three and a two. And if you can see in bar four, I've written a line where you hold your G down um, right up until the end of seven. And of course, if you've got a good hand shape, you'll be able to do this. Let's go on from bar eight. Back a bit like we did in the previous piece with the next G. So beginning of bar eight, here we go. One, two. to think about with a bow here, as I mentioned in bar 8. If we looked at bar 12, we've got a diminuendo on bar 12. Now at the end of 12 we mustn't do too much bow on that quaver, otherwise it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. So let's go from 12. Here we go. One, two. <laughs> So piano, wasn't it? But I just did it to exaggerate. Um, and of course, when I'm playing quietly, I can use my third finger to support the hair. So my, uh, my second finger isn't pushing down with all the weight in the bow hair, but my third finger is supporting it and enabling me to play quieter. I'd like to look now at Mrs. Nagvile's um, Chordal fingering exercises on page four. Well, it's not a, um, 
it's not an exercise, it's a challenge. And I wrote this really because I want to get the feel of cordial fingering. And I think there's probably um, nowhere in this book that's as hard as these exercises. Um, because it really makes you think about what you're doing with what finger. And I don't know if you've ever done this where you've done that and then you said identify one finger and then you move a finger and it's not the one you think it is. And that's what happens in this really. So um, this is just to get cordial fingering into your fingers and what it feels like. And then hopefully when it comes again, it won't be as difficult. That's the theory behind it anyway. So let's have a look at this. Now, in number one, after the third note, there's a strange sign, uh, which is my sort of invention of a contraction sign. And what I mean by a contraction is that you miss out a finger. So the hand contracts up and leaves this third finger left over. So let's do this pizzicato. Um, okay, and slowly. Okay, here we go. Three, four. play the right notes this time. Here we go. Three, four. Contract up. Three. Now it's possible to leave your fourth finger down all the time, um, but I haven't marked it, so I'm not, not telling you to do that necessarily. So we try that again. So starting with a three, then contracting up with a four, and then coming across with three, and then a one for the F natural. Let's try it together again. Here we go. Three, four. So you can see how the hand comes up around a bit more for that third finger and the fourth finger. Let's try the next one. Okay, so you can see that we've got chordal fingering on the last quaver of the first four and the next bar. So that's the chordal fingering here. Now B with a two, chordal fingering with that bracket again. So four, two, called third finger stick couldn't it because uh, by the time you get to the third quaver at the beginning you have to keep your third finger on the whole time until uh, the last bar so if you think about it in that context that might help to think well okay that's down and it's my fourth playing with a C and uh, my second playing a B and that's the position and that's the basis of lots of vial technique okay let's try number two here we go so Three, four. And I leave you to practice that. Okay, last one. Here we go. I think this one's slightly easier actually. Okay, here we go. Three, four. this lesson and I shall see you in the fourth lesson before no doubt more chordal fingering and more scales but lots of fun and loads of good pieces and we're going to be looking at the wrist and how to, to bow moving the wrist very slightly uh, to get a beautiful sound. Okay see you in the next lesson. Bye.